over the past few weeks I have found myself absolutely obsessed with this Ocean Gate submarine situation. Um, I found uh, an interview with another guy who is also running an unregulated submersible. He's been doing it for, for years and years and years and he's doing it right. He's doing it the same way that the Wright brothers did did aeronautics when, when they first made their plane, right? He only put himself in danger for like the first 5,000 hours of his dives or something. Um, and he had all the necessary safety that you would need. The only reason that he's not regulated is because the submersibles that he's using don't meet the requirements for him to, to be regulated by any of the, the bodies that deal with that. It doesn't mean he's not safe. He knows what he's doing and he knew the guy in charge of Ocean Gate really well and he, he knew about... In fact, he, he lived with him uh, for a, a while in the same building and they had an email exchange back and forth. They were both very busy men and he explained that they very rarely got to sit down together. Um, it's an interview that's well worth watching if you come across it. I'll try try find it on my history and put a link or something. Or maybe I'll chuck a clip in now if I can find it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the the way that the body of Ocean Gate, you've got to think of as two separate components, right? There's the end caps, and I'm sure anybody who's been, been following it, especially as deeply as me right now, you've got to have seen the wreckage being recovered. And you've seen that those those circular end caps um, were perfectly intact. And you can see that there's the hole where the porthole would have been. It's completely blown out. And it got people speculating that that's where the failure occurred. But I can tell you, even whether it was that or, or the cylindrical part that went first... Within a microsecond, it didn't matter. It really didn't matter which one of those things actually failed. The point is that the two end caps are circular. They make a ball, and a ball is like the strongest object, and that was made out of titanium. So it's perfectly reasonable for those to be found completely intact. Those, you know, it's a tested shape. It's a tested material. Those were the strongest parts of the boat, um, the boat, the submersible the the cylinder a cylinder is a much weaker shape right i've got a cylinder right here and as we know if i were if i wanted to crush this cylinder it'd be like a lot easier to do it that way right just sort of down like that way right that's how you'd crush a cylinder um the way it was wound i've got another cylinder here <laughs> i drink a lot of dr pepper um it was, if you watch video of it being made, it was wound that way, right? Which obviously means it's got zero strength in the direction that you would crush it. It should have been made that way, right? So that you couldn't crush it down, surely. Because this rounded part, like that's got strength and stability anyway, right? I mean, you know, it crushes, obviously. But it's an arch still. There's strength in arches. I know that. Um. Anyway... It was only gone the one way round, and I didn't understand all of this, obviously, but they were saying that it was laid wet, and when Boeing use the same material for their aeroplanes, they do a completely different process to make sure that it's hard when they're... I don't really understand what they were talking about with that. They just kind of brief, briefly brushed over it, and I thought, wait, that, that sounded important. <laughs> Go back, tell me more about that. But I'm just telling... I'm just explaining to you what i found because i've been and seen loads of different sources so yeah i i feel like um that validates my claim earlier on that the fact that it was uncertified or whatever is neither here nor there and a lot of people are making that out to be a big deal the control pad i still people uh, see people saying about the control pad and it, it's gone like there's two sides to it now and i'm firmly on on the camp that it was terrible and I hate that people keep saying, oh, the army use them. I've got a control pad right here, right? And you can see I've got a wired control pad, right? Now, 
in the case of mine, I can unplug that wire. And on the Xbox official ones, they they can't. It's it's fixed, right? You can get wireless control pads, and that's where everybody's getting confused. The submersible used a knockoff of a knockoff, a 20 quid Logitech wireless control pad that has the worst reviews, man. You check them reviews, and people using it for computer games were struggling with that control pad, right? And then you're trying to compare that to a wired official Xbox control pad that's used by the military with redundancy. Like, the whole control pad is redundant because they have analog controls there. And in any other submersible or any other craft where they use something like this, you will find that they also have a shitload of switches and buttons. So that if anything goes wrong with that, they've got manual controls over it. And this submersible did not have that. It had a couple of extra control pads. So if one of them broke, they'd just try a different one which means they've got to calibrate it. In the past, they'd had problems releasing the weights and they'd had to like shake the craft back and forth to release the weights um, in order to, to ascend on earlier dives. And this kind of leads me into what I, I'm pretty positive happened. So given all the information that, that I've got and I could be wrong, um, but on the way down, they had the sensors um, that were like last minute sensors that, you know, you really shouldn't be using to give you indications that the, the submersible is about to collapse. Really, it's a last minute sensor that said, hey, I'm experiencing more strain than I can handle and I'm about to break. And the last the last communication that the surface crew received was from the submersible saying that they had released the ballast and they were they were making an ascent so we can assume from that that it was an hour and a half into the dive right so they were an hour and a half down and it takes two hours to get to the floor so we can assume that they were on the way down the sensors went off that was like probably a mad warning that was like shit you know it's all about to go wrong so they sent the communication to the surface saying we're releasing the ballast and then the ballast got stuck because it was shit and he's trying to jiggle the control pad back and forth. We can assume that that's the last thing he was doing. Still descending or still stationary, struggling with the ballast for the last couple of seconds. Now, again, whether it was um, the porthole that gave way first or whether it was just the sheer crushing impact on the on the uh, cylindrical carbon fiber untested wound section of ship, the weakest part. Whichever one of those two went first, it, it absolutely doesn't matter because they died like seven times within the first split second. So if the porthole gave way first, it would then have led to the crumpling of the cylinder. And if the cylinder crumpled first, it would have immediately exploded out the the porthole. And so it really doesn't matter which, which part was the weakest part. But we can assume the fact that they released the ballast, that it was probably the cylinder that gave out because that's where the warning sensors were. They can't possibly have warning sensors on the porthole with it being made of perspex or whatever it's made of. It's fucking clear and see-through. There's no sensors in the way or showing you what that what stress that's causing. It's just, you know, you're on one side and the ocean's on the other side. And so the fact that they knew to release the ballast indicates to me that the sensors had gone off, which meant that it's the it's the hull that was struggling. Now, the next part that we're not being told, which is very interesting to me, is that the surface crew monitored the submersible's position using sonar which is sound so this is the moment that it imploded they must have known if that's the case which according to this other guy who runs a very similar operation but he was kind of pissed off that they were so lackadaisical because he'd spent his entire life trying to be as safe as possible and he's given him a bad reputation and now an even worse reputation right 
because they're the only two people doing this in the world. Um, and yeah, according to him, the surface vessel used sound waves to communicate with the submersible, the surface and the submersible sound. Yeah, yeah, I got that right. Which meant that when it imploded, they knew immediately that it imploded. They received a message saying like, you know, we're on our way up. It's an hour and a half into the dive, so they've not reached the bottom yet, let alone seen the, the Titanic. We, we can take from that that there was a problem. And then they saw this huge implosion on the, on the sensors. Now, the theory is, the lead-in theory that I've seen is that because the next person in line is the widow of, what's his name, the guy in charge, maybe they didn't have the balls to tell her. Maybe she knew the information, but she couldn't take it in. She couldn't accept that she was now a widow or whatever. And for the sake of the, the mother of the, the son that went, you know, um, you know, maybe, maybe there was a bit of that going on, like women just not being able to handle the truth. We all know how much women struggle with the truth. Um, the usually leftist liberal hippies that expect the world to be perfect and think we're the ones ruining it. Um, but yeah, going back to, to reality. So I, I think that's weird. And then we know, obviously, that the military... Now, the reason the military didn't come out immediately was, was twofold. One, nobody asked them. It's not their job to just step in and be like, oh, excuse me, they're all dead. Um, and two, obviously, it's sort of secretive information that James Cameron was very well aware of. And he was in with those kind of circles enough that he got the information within the first sort of few hours within the first sort of 24 hours, I've forgotten the exact timeline, but very soon after it happened, James Cameron was, was you know, um, in public saying, it's imploded, it's gone, you know, everybody on board was dead. It's the first implosion in history, and it's obviously the deepest implosion in history, with it being the first. So it'll go in the record books, and I think it's a deeply fascinating story, you know, so I've just been watching a thing now uh, that's led me to, to make this short video about what I've learned so far. And uh, this guy, again, is harping on, oh, the military used the controller, so it's not that bad that they used the controller. And uh, I just, it, it made me think, I can't believe people are still saying that. I think it's really obvious, the difference between the two. And it makes me think that AI is writing these scripts because I've noticed AI does that. Like it takes, it adopts a position. And even if you ask it to write a script um, that is anti that position, it'll start off that way. But by the end, it'll be like, oh, but it's not that bad really. And we're doing our best. I'm, I asked it to write me a script about bees. You know how much I hate bees. But it was like, oh yeah, bees are great. And I was like, you know, you can ask it questions and be like, yeah, you're wrong there, right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm wrong. It's quite happy. It's quite happy to admit that it's wrong, but it still says it. Anyway, that's the problem with arguing with a robot rather than a human, right? You argue with a human and they're at least embarrassed to be wrong. That's at least a start. It's a shame that they feel that way rather than just being like, oh, I'm, I'm more intelligent than I was a minute ago, which is the way I've always tried to take it. People go like, ah, because they expect me to be embarrassed. And I think that's weird, right? That That's akin to like, like I'm really skinny, yeah? And, and people go like, oh, you're really skinny. And I expect that to be an insult. Or like, I look like Stig of the Dump or whatever, <laughs> whoever that is. So people will be like, oh, you look like a right scruff. It's like, yeah. Is that supposed to be an insult? I don't I don't really understand how. It's just state you're stating a fact. Well done, you've got about the IQ of a two year old. You can state facts. <laughs> um but yeah, that that's all I know about the sub really. Um the hull was wound weird. The surface ship n could hear the implosion. They knew that the implosion had gone off. The control pad was a terrible idea, and they'd already had problems with the the weights dropping um, in order to ascend. So you put all that together and it's just like, 
it's a weird one man it's a weird situation but like i say it's the first time in history that it's happened oh uh the last bit of information was all his legal work goes through uh, where was it hawaii or the bahamas or something it's some fucking offshore bullshit anyway right because he knew he knew it was like risking the lives of everybody on board he fully knew and so yeah <laughs> he uh he made sure to offshore all the legal shit so if they want to take him his company to court his widow to court or whatever they've got to go do it in in the bahamas or wherever the fuck it is so i don't know i don't know a lot about this shit but it's fun right have fun guys take care peace